Welcome to the second panel of the, uh, this uh, upstream final conference. So we have, uh, the first one was to, to, to give uh, the main findings, you know, the, uh, uh, a pleasant way, we, ex we, we hope it has been pleasant to, uh, to present these findings by the, by the teams. And the uh, second panel is, is more targeting the, uh, concretely, how does it work uh, from the point of view of the stakeholders, those who are uh, in the situation to have the experience of doing or not doing uh, mainstreaming, depending on the uh, <coughs> specific position they have. So at the panel, um, uh, we, we are delighted to have um, uh, different uh, uh, stakeholders from, from, from the countries we were studying. Uh, to begin with, uh, Di Robinson, my, my left, uh, so, uh, I'm reading how you describe in the, in the, in the, in the program. Service director in the neighborhoods and communities in the Brist Bristol City Council. And um, then in the, at the far right, uh, Jean-François Founier, which is the head of the uh, Department for uh, Youth, uh, Sport and Social Cohesion. Um, in the uh, department of uh, the region, actually, uh, of uh, Rhône-Alpes, uh, uh, Paris. Soon, soon. Auvergne, soon. <laughs> yeah, changing the name. Uh, Clémentine Boren, which is my right, policy coordinator and the integration of minorities, Ministry of Social Affairs and Employment in the Netherlands. And Lorraine Audi, uh, policy advisor, Department for Communities and Local Government in UK. So um, I will uh, proceed like we've done uh, in the first panel, uh, raising some questions to our uh, panelists. Uh, I do it maybe less better than, than Peter down, but I try to do my best anyway. <laughs> um, so uh, what we want to know is uh, how do these uh, ideas and uh, strategies to mainstream integration of um, immigrants of second generation or minorities in your countries uh, at your level of responsibilities do look like. Uh, do you think uh, that this uh, strategy um, has been efficient? Or, uh, and how do you think it is really uh, answering to, the, uh, to the, the needs and the objectives that were uh, at stake in the integration policies before? Um, so, uh, maybe to begin with, uh, with UK and, and with Lorraine at, at my left. Um, Lorraine, would you say that the uh, uh, community cohesion uh, approach uh, is uh, favoring more the uh, targeting policies trying to, to, to reach communities uh, locally, or is it uh, having adopting the kind of uh, strategies we, we, we mentioned uh, in the previous panel, which is trying to identify specific situations regardless of uh, who is uh, involved uh, without designing specific recipients for these policies? Um, well, the current um, UK government um, integration policy, which is led by my department, the Department of Communities and Local. Um, government um, is very much a locally led strategy so essentially we have a strategic approach set out but you know very much say that integration is a local issue um, and um, hence local authorities are best placed to um, develop their own um, policies and obviously there's pros and cons of, of that approach um, the community cohesion approach was actually the labor government's approach um, so that was um, I mean, I would say, um, you know, there's probably trails of it far in advance of 2001, but it definitely um, came to the fore in 2001 after um, some riots in the UK um, in some cities. Um, and it was very much um, 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 also <coughs> a locally led policy, but there was more central government um, structure, I would say. Um, so there was a community cohesion strategy, and there was some funding through local strategic partnerships, um, etc. 
Um, and it was very much around um, a community development approach, I would say, so um, facilitating um, parts of a community to work together, <coughs> different community groups, you know, very much voluntary, community sector, um, community led, um, with um, more structure and more funding than is um, the current UK integration um, approach. Keep it short. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. So, uh, just to, to jump to the local level, mm. Dai, would you say that uh, uh, this approach has been, uh, is it the, the kind of approach you have developed locally in, in Bristol? Okay, well, Lorraine refers to the good old days where there was money for community cohesion. And I guess back to the point of what I was trying to say earlier in the previous session, there was an intention about community cohesion, which was about building cohesive communities as opposed to necessarily integrating one set of communities into another. It was a very different flavour and it was very community led. Um, it was well, reasonably well funded, but it also influenced um, local authorities such as my own to develop mainstream approaches around community development that included cohesion as a much more purposeful or intentional area of the work. Um, we don't really have that anymore. Um, so uh, the difference, I suppose, now, I mean, mainstreaming is quite interesting. Listening to the debate this morning, mainstreaming was muddied in the UK by neighbourhood renewal, which was um, a very big policy um, approach to area-based regeneration um, going back um, into the 2000s. But... Um, I guess from our point of view now, what we're trying to do is retain the intent and the purpose, but within a mainstreamed agenda. So we don't have lots of separate targeted programs to do that sort of work. Um, but what we do have is some purpose and some intent around what it is we're trying to achieve. And that is to build a cohesive and successful city eradicating wherever we can or minimising wherever we can the inequalities and that's inequalities across a whole range of different communities but when we talk about migrant communities particularly there are some other unique issues and I guess I've retained and want to keep the community development approach so I was talking to a colleague earlier that what's really important is that we also understand what it is communities view um, as integration and what they are trying to achieve as well as what we might have in our heads as authorities at a local level about what we're trying to achieve. So I guess somebody raised it earlier about the idea of being um, having intentional targeting under a mainstream agenda and I suppose that's where what we're trying to do. Mm. I, think. Mm. I think it's something to kind of echo kind of something that was said in the previous um, panel as well or on um, differing narratives from central and local government. So when I visit local authorities, they certainly still talk about the community cohesion agenda, um, even though central government does not anymore. We're you know very much talking about um, an integration um, mm -hmm. narrative, um, um, you know, with kind of strong political drive around British values, as people mentioned in the in the. Um, previous panel also um, very much a focus on tackling extremism um, so so there there, there is um, a central government um, narrative um, but on the ground local authorities um, you know and you know clearly kind of my department um, you know recognizes and, and and pushes local authorities to to you know that that, that is where integration takes place it's at the local level um, but yeah, certainly there are differing, um, you know, differing narratives. I think at the kind of local, um, you know, well, obviously the local area is focused on delivery mm. and practical kind of pragmatic um, things, which is probably easier to get things done. Okay, so I, I find it very interesting what you say about the the memory of the previous schemes, and as if the change at the top has not been totally incorporated or at least perceived yeah. locally. Uh, maybe it's a question for you as well, uh, Clementine, in uh, in the in the, the Netherlands. Uh, so uh, you describe a change of policy somehow, and you are it seems more involved in the mainstream policy than than in uh, in, uh, in other countries. Mm -hmm. So would you say that this uh, this change? Uh, has been uh, really taken on board by the local level, by the cities themselves, and they really uh, 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 enforce some kind of uh, strategy, the one you have conceived at the national level. 
Um, yes, I would agree to that. I think uh, in practice, uh, integration is, is uh, merely a, a topic that is uh, 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 merely based on the on the local uh, level. Um, but in general, if you look at the Netherlands, uh, uh, there are more topics. Uh, uh, for example, care, uh, especially care for the for the youth. Uh, but also uh, uh, care for the employment of the weaker groups is also recently decentralized from the uh, from the uh, 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 central level to the local level. But also uh, uh, integration is very important at the local level for the for the practice. Um, but on the other hand, I find it intriguing that that uh, uh, integration policy is is more a, a dimension of several fields of policy. And if you look at what policy really consists of, then you see at a national level that mostly uh, people think of laws and subsidies, this is so means and, and, and rules. But if you look at the field of integration, there are a lot of other policy tools that are really important. And that are tools that we use to uh, communicate and support the, uh, the, the local, the municipalities with. And then I'm talking about dialogue, uh, uh, getting to know the minority groups, getting to know the, the key figures. Um, another very important uh, instrument is, is research, uh, and supporting uh, uh, local uh, um, municipalities with good data. Recently we started with a new knowledge program, uh, it's called uh, uh, KISS, and um, the function of the knowledge program is not only to uh, uh, support municipalities with good data, but also with supporting them with uh, good uh, um, dialogue meetings. So I would say that's an important new uh, field in which we relate to the fact to support them with knowledge and dialogue. Now you got to get the notes. You think it's this one? Is, uh, I think we can shut this down. Maybe it's better. Okay, so we, we, we will use that. Okay, uh, uh, Clementine, just to go back to the argument that have been made that uh, the change of the, the policies uh, or the strategy nationally, have, then, uh, have, they, uh, have this change really uh, uh, been incorporated, implemented locally, or you see a superposition of different type of approach? One, I see. I see different kind of approaches. Um, if you see, if you look at the field of integration, um, there are so many different things uh, uh, that come with it. It has to do with access to closed groups. It has to do with uh, labor participation. So it is on as well on a local level as on a national level. The approach is so very diverse that. Um, I wouldn't say that it has gone uh, in total from national to local. Okay, so you mm. still see some multiculturalist uh, approach mm. locally? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, Jean-François, if you... Uh, so, would you say that uh, in your position you... Uh, uh, I've been able to I implement the uh, the new strategy defined by the uh, uh, the government in terms of integration and and what kind of consequences uh, these uh, new guidelines have on your activity. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, first, I, I would like to say one thing <laughs> as a French. Uh, I'm very happy to be here with you because uh, in France uh, today, uh, it's, uh, it's not e so easy to, uh, to speak about integration. 
Uh, as you know it, uh, we had strikes uh, at the beginning uh, of year. Uh, so uh, the, the killers 